Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to do a spoilery book chat for Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey. This of course is the first book in the Expanse series and as I mentioned I am going to be talking spoilers in this video so if you have not read this book I'm going to direct you to the cards or the description box where I'm going to have a link to a spoiler free review I did a while back of Leviathan Wakes. Highly recommend this book and the entire series. I have read all published books which at this point is eight books with the nine book coming out soon and I decided to reread the series basically as a chance to connect with other fans of The Expanse and get to talk about a series that I absolutely love in an uncensored way where I don't have to worry about dropping spoilers. So I'm going to be talking about everything that happens in this book but while I have read the rest of the series I am going to keep this spoiler free for the rest of the series so I'm going to be mindful of not talking about future events, hinting at whether or not people die in later books books and so forth. I really hate when people do that and kind of give away too much of what's to come. So I'm just going to be talking about this book and just keep my thoughts really self-contained. But if you can't tell, I absolutely loved it and just want to gush about it a little bit more online. So all that being said, let's get into the spoilery talk. I am going to put this book down because everyone makes fun of me that I tend to hold up these books while I do my videos. And yeah, they're pretty heavy. So I'm going to put that book down and let's get started. So as I said, I'm a huge fan of the series. So I really, for the most part, I'm just going to be talking about the things I loved. I will be mentioning a few small criticisms, but like I said, this is not a hate rent review by any means this is really someone talking about one of their all-time favorite series. So going back into this book I will say that even though I knew where it was going, I knew the plot, the book does such a good job of pulling you into the story. Specifically Holden's storyline works so well because the action starts so fast and I really think that it surprises the reader at least the first time around when the Canterbury explodes and you just get to see their whole crew just disappear in an instant and I just thought it created a really good jaw-dropping moment and further to that they then have this small crew and of course every time I reread it even though I know again I know the story I always have a moment where I go who's this shed guy why don't I remember shed and then I'm like oh yeah because his head blows off and then he's dead and that is a scene that has always made me compare this book to the Game of Thrones series or a Song of Ice and Fire series of course because I really think that it has that surprise factor especially in this book I just think that it really plays with the reader's expectations because especially with space opera and so forth I feel like the books tend to play it pretty safe in other series but this one starts you off with these big moments and it basically makes you feel really unsafe for the characters and you know if they're going to survive or not which I'll get into later about actually the fact that they killed off Miller at the end of this book. Another thing I think works really well with this first book is the horror elements. If you don't follow my channel you may not know I'm a huge huge fan of horror books and I just love those horror elements in this one. So definitely some gruesome scenes involving the protomolecule, how it basically destroys bodies and the vomit zombies were so good. I love zombie stories so I was all here for that. I'm always nervous when someone is reading this book for the first time that they won't totally love it. So many people hate zombies but for the most part everyone I know has been pretty on board when the vomit zombies show up and just even the scenes involving Julie and when you get to find out later at the end of the book and get to see her and just the descriptions of when she is like murdered and then later on when you see her body again when Miller finds her. I just love the body horror around that. I got some great imagery. I have watched a part of the show at this point but for me my first love is always the books and just reading the books before I got to see the TV show I had such vivid images in my head of what that looked like and I'm not usually a visual reader so I really think that speaks well to the books and again I think it just goes with that aspect of surprise that they create these really thrilling situations and add in these horror elements and you have that still wrapped up within a science fiction book so I really feel like this book appeals to a lot of different readers who don't necessarily normally read a lot of sci-fi. 
And I think it just really speaks to why this book has such a wide audience because I've recommended it to just so many people. And at least at this point, I haven't actually had anyone not enjoy these books. So that makes me really happy. The other thing I love at the beginning of the story is the world building or, you know, the solar system building for lack of a better word, because I love learning about the tension between the different planets, how, uh, the Earthers have a very different culture and background to those that live on Mars and those that live in the belt. And you get to, of course, hear about the physical differences, how they are affected by gravity and so forth. Um, but just even like the small differences and just the idea that like the Martians somehow picked up a Texan accent and it just went wild and everyone ended up having this like drawl. I love those little details. I just think it makes the world really rich. And I really do think that each of the groups feels very distinct, but I think it's done in a way that feels very organic because you can see why that would happen. They talk about on Earth how there's all these regulations around population control. And then of course, Mars having to survive on a more desolate planet, why they became more military focused, why they're a little bit more rough around the edges. And then of course the belters where it's all about scrapping and all of those things. And of course each place has their own dialect. And I think that they did a great job of establishing a lot of world building in a very small amount of time. And it's definitely one of my favorite aspects of the series and you get so much of it in this first book. So I just love those elements. Again, rereading it, I was just like, drinking up all those details and loving it all over again. Even though I knew the details, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that little detail here. And oh yeah, this happened as well. So love that so much. Now I want to talk a little bit about the characters specifically, and let's talk about Holden. I have such a hate love relationship with him. I've always felt like a bit of a kindred spirit with him because I also share a huge love of coffee, which I really enjoy those little moments where they're talking about him trying to drink coffee in like low G gravity and all that. I thought those moments are so relatable. And in a lot of ways, I do like him as a character. I think that he's very genuine. He, you know, really does things trying to do the right thing, trying to be a generally moral person. But at the same time, it makes him so frustrating because he's such an idealist. He is just has these rose colored glasses on his face. And it gets him in so much trouble. So the scene when he goes and he basically tells the whole world what happened to the Canterbury and without really thinking about it, just implies that Mars was behind it. Of course, he doesn't actually imply it. He just simply identifies that there is a Martian code on this recording and so forth, but he never thinks about the repercussions or rather he thinks about the repercussions as if they're going to be straightforward. He just has this like black and white view of the world and how everything should be. And it's just so naive. So the more I reread the series, the more I realize how purposely his character is done. And I do think that he's meant to be almost a frustrating character. I definitely think that the authors were very aware when they were writing his flaws. And like I said, it kind of makes me love and hate him, but hate him in a way that, you know, I appreciate him and I realize that it's very much done on purpose. So overall, I do like that. I always think it's interesting that they built that romance at the beginning of the book with the crewmate, I already forget her name, that blew up with the Canterbury. I think it was done for a few reasons. One would have been to create a little bit more attachment with the crew. And so you can understand why they would be so devastated by that loss. I mean, of course it makes sense, but to kind of get the reader invested too. But I think it also shows again, his romanticism. So the fact that he was just hooking up with this girl and she kind of knew that it was just a fling but he was way more invested in it and it goes again when he ends up becoming involved with Naomi and I might as well talk about Naomi now I like her as a character in this one but she's definitely not my favorite that is probably the biggest criticism of this first book is that it doesn't have the strongest female representation Naomi for the most part is the only female that we actually get to see alive in this book and a lot of her interactions have to do with her romance with Holden and I don't love their romance. I think other people like it more than I do. But for me, it's a few things. It's the fact that Holden again is a romantic and Naomi kind of calls him on it that he just falls in love with her overnight. He's attracted to her and just suddenly like loves her. And it does feel really out of the blue. And I'm okay with him just being a head over heels, fall in love with her kind of person. 
but then I feel like they actually tried to build it into this great relationship and I would almost rather it be the superficial puppy love that it started out to be and kind of again show it as part of Holden's flaw instead of trying to suddenly turn it into a romance that I feel like they are expecting the reader to enjoy. And then Naomi's explanation about why she liked Holden just felt really weak to me how basically he played poker with a girl that wasn't attractive but was into him and he didn't lead the other girl on because he wasn't attracted to her and that's why Naomi likes him like what I don't know again this is probably my largest criticism of the book is all the stuff around the female characters I just found Naomi to be very weak and I felt like she was written in to be a love interest which is not my favorite thing of course along a similar line the main complaint often with the characters character of Julie is that she is basically a character that was created and killed off for the sake of a male character having a storyline. So you could call this a situation where a character gets fridged. And I am probably less sensitive to this than other readers. It definitely doesn't stop me from enjoying a book. Again, I love this series, but I do recognize that it's not the best way to plot a story and that it's overdone and often unnecessary. So I am disappointed that this first book is framed around there because that's probably the only thing that I've heard has stopped people from loving this book is the fact that they really do find that frustrating if you read it with a really feminist lens on that I think you can see that it could have been stronger. Now in terms of other characters I gotta talk about Amos who I absolutely love. He has the best lines in this series and I just think he's so funny. I was trying to remember some of these before I started to film but even the part where Naomi and Holden are like passing the pepper shaker to each other and he's like oh great you guys hooked up and just like picks things up and he just calls things like it is he just has really like snarky responses and just like criticizing like things in a really funny way I don't know he's just he's the comic relief but at the same time he's such a serious character and he just it's the perfect balance he's easily like my favorite of the supporting characters at this point and I just adored him. On the flip side, I do want to talk a little bit about Alex, and that's mostly to say that I don't have much to say about him. And it's not that I don't like Alex, I just don't feel like he's really fleshed out at this point. I did find it interesting rereading this that at the beginning they mentioned that Alex um, is someone who basically talks too much and they implied that, that makes him an annoying pilot. So when I read that line, I tried to pay attention and pick up more of that, but I didn't feel like he had that many lines. I didn't feel like he was ever saying a whole lot in any scene. If anything, again, I felt like Amos was saying way more and again, got all the funny lines. So I have no issue with Alex, but he's definitely the most forgettable of the crew, at least in this story. I just feel like he really doesn't become his own and I don't have a really good sense of who he is it's more like the authors are telling us who he is but what I'm seeing on the page doesn't fully match at this point so definitely one I want to revisit as we get through the later books other supporting characters I gotta mention is of course Fred who is a, such a fascinating character at this point as of filming this I have not read the novella where it actually expands and gives his background as the butcher of that station massacre but I just think the OPA and and him in general are so unique because it's like morally gray and switching sides and you just don't really know how much to trust him and I just love him as a character because he's so mysterious in this first book and you just know that there's more to his character there's more coming and he's just kind of a wild card because again he's not really on like Holden's side he's very much on his own side and he helps the crew when it helps his own causes and I love love that setup of course I can't talk characters without also talking about Miller and I don't think other people really like Miller but I personally love of him. I'm actually a big fan of like mystery stories and like crime noir and I realize he's a bit of a like archetype or stereotype character where he has this like fedora hat and goes around and kind of you know bends justice to like meet his like needs and all of that but I love it because the biggest thing they did and this has to be a purposeful choice is he is the perfect foil to Holden. So while Holden sees everything as black and white he's all about justice and coming forward and being open 
Miller is the opposite. Like, not that he is a bad character, but he very much sees that justice and the systems that are supposed to support justice are horribly flawed. And so in his own work, he admits that, you know, sometimes people like disappear out of like airlocks and sometimes justice doesn't get served through the political bureaucratic channels and sometimes you have to take it into your own hands. Now I do wish that there had been more reasoning behind the fact that Miller is so obsessed with Julie. I just didn't really fully buy it and I just felt like it didn't completely make sense. He never met her. He barely actually saw any video footage of her until later into the book and so much of his plot and storyline is about him trying to track her down and just needing to know her and falling in love with her. And again, it's kind of that romanticism that I don't really like in a story. So if you're getting anything out of this, is the fact that I don't like a lot of romance in my science fiction. But obviously it was all done for a purpose. And I am glad that at the end it was somewhat established that Julie did have a conscious presence. So it wasn't totally in his head. Overall, I really like Miller's story and it makes me disappointed that he died in this one because I wanted more from him as a character and I really like his dynamics between himself again and Holden, like when they're actually talking back and forth and like when Holden wanted to go and send out another message to the whole solar system telling them what was going on with the proto molecule and like Miller had to be like, no, you did this once, it was stupid and actually walk him through all of the issues. So I definitely think that they missed out on opportunities to have more of that. But however, I'm also a huge fan of stories that allow their main characters to be killed off. And I really enjoy that because it's the fact that no one is safe. And that's why I really wanna be careful how I'm wording this video because for those of you that are just reading through the series as you're watching these videos, I don't want to spoil the later books, so I'm not going to tell you who's safe, who survives to book eight, etc. And you'll just have to experience that for yourself because again, it's something where it gets compared to a Game of Thrones because you want a story where no one is quite safe, where you know, it's not that cookie cutter setup where the main characters miraculously survive everything. So I'm happy that they killed Miller off because I really think it sets the tone. Because reading through this book the first time, I completely expected that the rest of the series would be Holden and Miller teaming up together and, you know, fighting the baddies and all of that. And then when this book ends, it's like, nope, nope. It's not what I expected. And of course, I have read further in the series, so I know where it's going. But needless to say, I am so excited to get to talk to you all about the next books because lots happens. I have lots of opinions on the later books in the series, and I don't feel like those ones get discussed as much because a lot of people only read book one and then stop there. But there's so many questions that we're left with knowing what is going to happen with the proto molecule and the larger picture and the characters, all that. But I'm going to leave it here and I'll come back once I've reread the second book, Caliban's War. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for sticking around till the end. I would love to hear your comments down below. If you love this book or even if you hated it, I would love to hear your opinions on the characters, the plot, all of that. Um, just make sure to include any spoiler tags if you're talking about anything past this book. For the most part, I really want to keep all the discussions surrounding this focused on Leviathan Wakes, just for the sake of those, again, that are reading this series for the first time. If you're new to my channel, I hope you consider subscribing because I am intending to do a lot more Expanse series content, including more spoilery reviews. I do also read a lot of science fiction, horror, fantasy, and some thrillers. So if that interests you as well, you can definitely watch those videos. And if you are watching to the end, I hope you give this video a thumbs up. It helps with visibility so that more people can find this video and hopefully find other people that are really excited about the Expanse series and the final book coming out soon enough. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.